Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 10th of October. India relied on Russian weapons as West chose to arm military dictatorship, says Foreign Minister Jay Shankar. Activists stage protests in Germany against Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan. And Sri Lanka's ex-PM Mahindra Rajpaksa pledges to support Vikramasinghe. And now for all the details, Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Monday said the West for decades chose to arm military dictatorship in India's neighborhood and did not supply weapons as he defended India's inventory of Russian origin weapons. He said he did not want to say in advance how India will vote at the UN General Assembly on a likely draft resolution against Russia this week. But he made it clear that New Delhi is against the conflict because it does not serve the interest of anybody. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Monday held the 13th Foreign Minister's Framework Dialogue with his Australian counterpart Penny Wong in Canberra and took stock of the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. He said they discussed progress on economic cooperation and trade agreement, defence and counter-terrorism, among other areas of mutual interest, including the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In a joint media briefing, Jay Shankar said he would abstain from saying in advance how India will vote at the UN General Assembly on a likely draft resolution against Russia. He, however, made it clear that New Delhi is against the conflict because it does not serve the interests of anybody. While speaking on India's inventory of Russian origin weapons, he said it is because the Western countries preferred the military dictatorship in the neighborhood over India. For multiple decades, Western countries did not supply uh, uh, supply. Uh, weapons to India uh, and in fact saw a military dictatorship next to us as the preferred partner. So uh, I think we all in international politics deal with what we have. Uh, we make judgments, judgments which uh, are reflective of uh, uh, both our future interests as well as our current uh, situation. India and China last month abstained to vote on a UN Security Council resolution condemning the Russia's proclaimed annexation. Jay Shankar also highlighted Indian PM Modi's remarks to Russian President in a meeting in Samarkand that this is not an era of war. Jay Shankar said as the country of the global south, India has been seeing firsthand how much the conflict has impacted low-income countries. And Mulang Singh Yadav, a veteran Indian politician and three-time chief minister of the country's most populous Uttar Pradesh state, died on Monday after over six weeks in hospital. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said Yadav's death was a huge loss for the nation and that his blessings and advice stayed with him to date. Mulayam Singh Yadav, a veteran Indian politician and three-time chief minister of the country's most populous state, died on Monday after over six weeks in hospital. My respected father and your respected leader, Netaji, is no more. His son, Akhilesh Yadav, said in a tweet from the Samajwadi Party's official account. Yadav, who was 82, entered politics in his 20s, rising to become chief minister of Nadan Uttar Pradesh state in 1989, 1993 and the year 2003. Mulayam Singh Yadav also served as India's Federal Defence Minister in coalition government between 1996 and 1998. Indian PM Modi took to Twitter to express condolences and said his death was a huge loss for the nation and that his blessings and advice stayed with him to date. He described him as a humble and grounded leader who was sensitive to people's problems. Yadav's mortal remains were later on Monday brought to his ancestral village Safai where a funeral ceremony will be held on Tuesday. In recent years, Mulayam Singh handed over the leadership of the party to his son Akhilesh Yadav, although he remained a senior leader and a member of the national parliament. The Samajwadi Party, which last held power in the state between 2012 and 2017 with Akhilesh Yadav as chief minister, has come under pressure from India's ruling Bhatia Janta Party that has swept two consecutive state elections since then. 
In news from Pakistan, amid speculation of a massive long march rally in Islamabad by PTI, the opposition party's chief Imran Khan has now announced that he will launch a fill the prison movement against the ruling coalition. Khan has been leading a campaign to demand snap elections since his ouster as the prime minister in April. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and Opposition PTI Party Chief Imran Khan has announced to launch Jail Bharo Tehreek or Fill the Prison Movement against the ruling coalition. Addressing a public gathering in Niawali, he warned the federal government against threatening PTI supporters of detention and said that he would sacrifice his life for the real freedom of the country. All of the imported government's plans against the PTI would fail and they would be forced to call elections, he claimed. He also pointed out during his PTI's tenure, the country's economy was recovering, but it has now worsened under the rule of PMLN and PPP and all their allies. Pakistan People's Party leader and Federal Minister Shehri Rehman said on Twitter that Imran Khan was giving the threat of filling the prisons while he himself takes bail before arrest in every case against him. He wants people to go to jail but not himself, she said. Khan has been leading rallies since his dismissal as the Prime Minister in April to demand snap elections, which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying that the voting will be held as scheduled later next year. And Baloch activist staged a demonstration in Berlin recently against the issue of enforced disappearances and grave human rights situation in Balochistan. They said Baloch people have long been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state while it exploits their natural resources. Members of the Baloch National Movement held a protest in Germany's Berlin city this past weekend against the enforced disappearances of Baloch people and grave human rights situation in Balochistan. The activists highlighted that for two decades, Pakistan Army and other law enforcement agencies have abducted thousands of Baloch political and social activists who had been demanding fundamental rights. They also raised concern over several cases of extrajudicial killings and rapes, terming it all a genocide. The demonstrators urged the international community to intervene. We are today here to tell the world that how Pakistan is suppressing the Baloch voice, how they want to uh, make Baloch people slave and how they want to take the, uh, nas their national identity. They want to make Baloch Activists have long blamed innocent Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state while it exploits their natural resources. They say such incidents have increased manifold, particularly in the wake of the construction of the China-Pakistan economic corridor in the region. And moving on, residents of Gilgit Baltistan recently observed a shutterdown strike against the passage of the Revenue Authority Act. They said Pakistan government is imposing unjust taxes on the people in the illegally occupied region without granting any fundamental rights to them. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan recently held a shutterdown strike against the passage of the Revenue Authority Act which they said will adversely affect the common people in the illegally occupied region. They said Gilgit Baltistan Revenue Authority Bill 2022 has imposed new taxes on 135 items. They said it is unjust to impose taxes in the disputed region, which has remained marginalized due to neglect by Pakistani authorities and has been facing brunt of rising inflation. They said Pakistani government is imposing taxes under various names without granting any fundamental rights to the people of the region.
ٹریٹکس فری ہونا چاہیے یہاں پہ مطلب یہ بہت زیادتی ہو رہی ہے ان کے ساتھ جو حقوق ہے وہ نہیں مل رہے جب حقوق مل جائیں گے تو بندہ ٹیکس بھی دے دے لیکن یہ ٹیکس کے لیے نا جو ہے نا بالکل ناجائز ہے یہ لوگ ٹیکس دے رہے ہم جو ہڑتال کیا ہوا ہے لوکلز بلیم پاکستان ہیز مس رولڈ دا ریجن فار مور دین سیون ڈیکیڈس اینڈ دے آر ناٹ ایون کنسلٹڈ وین دی گورمنٹ برنگز اباؤٹ سچ لیجسلیشن دے سے دیر از اے اسٹوج گورمنٹ ان دا ریجن بٹ اٹ اونلی ہیلپس اسلام آباد فل اٹس ٹریجریز تھرو اکنامک ڈیپریڈیشنس And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's former Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa pledged support to incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe as he addressed his first public meeting this past weekend since being forced to resign in May over the country's worsening economic crisis. He said Ranil was moving forward on the right path to steer the island nation out of the crisis. Sri Lanka's former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa addressed his first public meeting this past weekend since he was forced to resign in May and ouster of his younger brother, former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, in July. During the public meeting by his SLPP party in Kalutara, 77-year-old Mahinda said, we will continue to support incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe to defend this government. He was our opponent but now he is on the right path, he added. The entire Rajapaksa clan was forced to resign from the government earlier this year following violent countrywide protests against them for leading the island nation to its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. Mahinda Rajapaksa was replaced by Ranil Vikramasinghe, a member from the opposition as the Prime Minister. In mid-July, when Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled the country after a public uprising, Vikramasinghe became the president for the rest of the Gotabaya's term till 2024. In the latest, the country's Supreme Court last Friday granted permission for proceedings against Gotabaya and Mahinda over a petition calling for accountability for the worst financial crisis. And the first ever Global Drone Expo held in India's Chennai city brought together farmers, industrialists and market players under the same roof over the past weekend. The event was attended by delegates from 14 different countries with a special focus on aiding the agricultural sector. The Indian Drone Association, IDA and drone making company Garoda Aerospace hosted the Global Drone Expo 2022 in India's southern Chennai city over the past weekend with a special focus on aiding the country's agricultural sector. Chief Executive Officer of Garoda Aerospace, Agneshwar Jayaprakash said the expo aimed to bring farmers, industrialists, market players and bankers under the same roof. The event attended by delegates from 14 different countries was organized with a view to turn India into a global drone hub by 2030. What this expo intends to do is to bring together a lot of industry experts, agricultural farmers, dealers, distributors, industry experts, people from the government, from the banking sector, from the insurance sector and bring all the majority of the stakeholders related in the drone ecosystem in India. Representative of National Agro Foundation said drone will be the answer in future to all the problems faced by farmers in agriculture. Though this uh, drone technology is uh, very much in nascent stage, it is the need of the hour. Uh, uh, being from an uh, agriculture fraternity, um, nowadays uh, we are facing a lot of uh, labor shortages. So drone will be the answer uh, in, um, uh, in future uh, uh, to all these uh, problems uh, faced by farmers and agriculture. Earlier this year, India saw a two-day drone festival inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and presented digital certificates to 150 drone pilots to facilitate the country's striving towards becoming a drone hub. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.